It is the wild, wild west when you're looking into commercial leasing. Let's learn some more. My name is Fadi Kuder. I'm a local realtor here with Sutton Group Ottawa. And let's talk about the nine things that you did not know about when it comes to commercial leasing. You want to stay tuned for number nine. Number one, there are many types of commercial leasing. Things like single net, double net, triple net, absolute triple. Each one of them is different and it all depends on what you're looking for in terms of the lease. Each one has different expenses attached to it. So without knowing exactly what these are, you might be setting yourself up for failure. Number two, did you know that commercial lease actually follows what we call contract law? It doesn't really follow what we call statutory. This is a massive difference, especially when you're looking at it that you're comparing it if you want to a residential. With residential, I can literally put whatever I want in the application to lease. And then at the end of the day, nobody really gives a damn what's in there. The reason being is because it follows what we call a statutory law. So the Ontario Residential Tenancy Act trumps it, completely trumps it. The same for commercial does not apply. For commercial, basically whatever I want happens at the APS or the application to lease. And then also it happens in the contract that we put together. So always be careful what goes in that contract because that becomes law. Commercial is like the wild, wild west. And this is what I was talking about earlier. With commercial, you literally can negotiate anything. You can negotiate the fees, you can negotiate the rent, you can negotiate the amount of time that you want to do improvements. You can even negotiate who pays for what. The best part about it is it's all up to having that negotiation power with your real estate agent. Number four, did you know that there's a difference between fixed term and a month to month when it comes to commercial? What a fixed term means, basically I am renting the space, whatever that space is, for a short amount of time or a long amount of time or it's a fixed term. Meaning, if I wanna rent it for five years, at the end of those five years, guess what? The rent completely automatically becomes null and void and then you have to move out. That's if you don't do any sort of renewals. So that's what a fixed term is where the month to month, technically you can stay there as long as you want and you only have to give one month notice. So for example, if you wanna leave, for example, on the end of October, let's say October 31st, then at that point I would have to give notice before September 30th, just to make sure that we're giving the landlord one month. And that same goes to the landlord as well. The landlord can give you the same amount of time, six, 30 days, that's it. It's not like the Ontario Residential Tenancy Act with residential where you have to give 60 days and that's about it. Number five, when it comes to the commercial, always rely on realtor so you can actually put what we call an offer to lease or a letter of intent. I would not rely on the realtor such as myself to write you the full contract. Although I'm good at it, and to be very honest, the best thing you can do to yourself is to hire a lawyer to go through that because at the end of the day, what you put through that contract becomes law. And me as a real estate agent, my job is to negotiate for you to get you the best terms possible to get you the all of the different little details that goes with the lease. But I can't necessarily put things in law, if you will. So the best thing to do to protect yourself and also to make sure to protect myself as well is to refer you to a lawyer and say, here is the lawyer to write the contract for you. Because at the end of the day, the lawyer might catch something that I've missed or vice versa. Which brings me to number six, hire a lawyer. The reason why you wanna hire a lawyer because at the end of the day, the lawyer is going to be putting things in perspective. There's so many different details in the commercial lease that sometimes we miss. For example, if you wanna talk about, let's say you're selling the business, you want to be able to put a clause in there where it protects the next sort of uh, buyer of your business to continue that lease agreement. Because at the end of the day, like when you're selling a business, you're selling it with the goodwill and you're selling it with the fact that there is this sense of continuity. And if you don't put that clause in there, that could actually hurt your chances of selling the business. So even though I'm good at what I do, hire a lawyer because that lawyer is going to be allowing you for all the different outcomes for the business and catching everything that I might have missed. Number seven, did you know that commercial lease goes by what we call a leasable space? And there's also such thing as a common space. The difference between the two, the leasable space is basically the space that the business could potentially use for setting up shop. So for example, if we got an office, it's all of the different areas in the office that me as a business can use, as a tenant, if you will, can use for my business. Where common areas, those are areas that are outside. For example, I might share the space with another office. That's common space. Although it's not leasable, I'm not necessarily paying for it, but I am paying for some of those expenses. So be careful when you're leasing and look at what we call the leasable space. And a lot of the times, we use certain terms such as BOMA to be able to kind of measure those spaces and, and figure out exactly what the space looks like. So you're not necessarily overpaying or underpaying. This brings me to number eight, common areas. Did you know that in commercial leasing, there's such a thing as common areas and you're always responsible for it. So 
I'll give you an example. If you're renting, uh, you know, an apartment or something in a multi-unit, a lot of the times you don't, you're not responsible for the lights outside. You're not responsible for the stairs or the uh, elevator or anything like that. However, when it comes to commercial lease, you are responsible for what we call common expenses. And a lot of the times, depending on the type of lease that you're getting, if it's a single net, double net, triple net, or absolute triple, which is obviously the one that most people go to, it's the most profitable for landlords. You are responsible for all of those expenses that come with the absolute net. And number nine, which is by far one of my favorites for my investors, for my commercial investors, and this is the fact that you can evict at 16 days without notice. So hypothetically speaking, say the tenant decided not to pay or couldn't pay or whatever the case may be and they missed the payment on the first of the month. The days go by, 10 days go by, 15 days go by. At day 16, I can do two things. One, I can evict them. Two, I can change the locks and they're not allowed to go in. And then after that, I can take them to court and possibly sell their stuff and get back some of the proceeds. For more episodes like this, for more tips like this, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. When you hit the subscribe, hit that bell icon so you get more and more little tips about real estate here in Ottawa. My name is Fadi Kuder with Sutton Group Ottawa. Thanks again.